All right, my friends, welcome back to another VRising Rising video. We are back again. Stunlock is not giving us a single break in between these updates in preparation for 1.0. Uh, today, we're gonna be going over the update post that was just posted today on Stunlock's website for VRising. Rising. But before we do that, I just wanna say, if you are interested in this type of content or wanna stay updated on VRising, Rising or want to see general just theory crafting and information about how to be good at the game or progress at the game very well, feel free to subscribe. And also there is a Discord link that I made a Discord for everybody. Uh, if you wanna check out the Discord, talk with people, see some more content that other people have um, and just generally maybe find somebody to play with and whatnot, post a server, go feel free to use that link to, uh, to join the community. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump in on this really quickly. So this is update 1.0. We're going to scroll down all right so this is going to go over by the way all of the information that they have released to us give us it's giving us way more information this is the ruins of mortium so we already learned a little bit about this in one of their previous posts but after forgotten centuries the slumbering peace of this domain of eternal night is punctured by the marching of dracula's legion venture beyond the lands of man and into the shadows where ancient evil stirs so this looks pretty sick uh i, I know these guys right here i try to zoom in a little bit here it's kind of difficult but these little creepy dudes with sickles and like they look like they look they look like they're doing some kind of summoning ritual or something so that's pretty cool to see what that's about and okay conflict zone gather your strength for war in the ruins of mortium an end game region so this is the full new region name that introduces dynamic conflict events to elevate your V-Rising experience, engage in skirmishes against the Dracula against Dracula's Legion of Noctum, and conquer rifts to claim exclusive resources. So I think this this location very much seems like it's going to be the spot that um has to do with the shards or recharging our shards. You know, they mentioned that with, once you have shard, you're gonna have to do in-game events to charge them. I'm pretty sure that's gonna happen here. But also it says dynamic conflict events, which is so cool. I mean, you can see these guys look like they're dropping in, like these uh, vampires or something are dropping in here. So I'm very interested interested to see what these events are and what we can actually get there. World improvements. Experience new discoveries in Farbane Woods. Dive into the heart of Vardoran and the Dunley farmlands and unearth the legend of Dracula's demise where the iconic vampire king is was defeated centuries ago by the Church of the Light. So I'm interested in this what this means um if you've played v rising since the beginning or even just in the gloom rather the current version you'll pro you're probably aware of certain areas of the map that have something going on there that isn't currently being used and i know that in pre previous updates over the past couple of years that stonelock has mentioned that these will be used in the full version of the game i believe that's what they're referring to here um so a lot of stuff that we can go over with that. There's a lot of places that I think on the map right now that are that could be used for this. There's a couple places in Farbane, and there are there's at least one location I can think of in Dunley, as well as quite a few places in Cursed Forest that I think could be either improved or used for something like this. So like the Lurker Dens, the uh, Witch's Huts, the Mosquito Areas, the Mosquito Hives. Those places are kind of barren in my you know in my opinion they don't really have a whole lot there um there's also the an area next to gore crusher's cave that is like this old broken down ruin area that clearly something should be going on there most likely uh but yeah we'll have to wait and see there's a couple cool pictures here and we, of course we have the fisherman bob whatever this guy's name is i'm gonna name him bob Okay, cool. Uh, cargo travelers, the arrogant humans of Vardoran now traverse the world, carrying precious cargo from location to location. Satisfy your thirst for blood and valuable loot at the same time by intercepting their caravans to, and further your rise to power. So this is actually crazy. Clearly this one's in Silverlight. This one's in Dunley. And this shows a little small preview. It's kind of hard to see this. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. It shows a little bit of a preview. It looks like loot that we get. So it looks like if we've destroyed the caravan, there's a chest on the back. But there's also stuff that dropped. And some of those things are look to be weapons. Like this is the same icon as a weapon drop. Like for like if you see like a reinforced bone spear or something that, out in the wild. This is what it looks like on the ground. So I'm really interested if that is what it's going to be like if we have the ability to like find a caravan and get a weapon drop like how hard are the caravans to take on how often are they there um 
imagine you start a fresh run and the caravan is something that you're confident in taking care of. Like there's enough enemies that you like, you think that you can take care of them. Imagine if you could like instantly jump up a little bit with your weapons. That would be interesting. All right. So the world of Ardoran comes to life. So here's basically just a, a few screenshots to make it look, just to show some really cool things they have here. They've increased the textures a lot. Like they look, this looks super, super nice. This is the bridge outside of uh, Brighthaven, I believe. I mean, that just looks super good. And then this is an area in Farbane. Looks really, really, really nice. I like what they did here. And then also, this is terrifying. This is up towards Gore Crusher's cave, and he's like walking up towards you. So <laughs> imagine you go in there, he's not in there, and you're like, oh, I guess there's nothing here. And then you turn around, and Gore Crusher is pressuring you inside, to his, inside of his cave. That would be terrifying. And okay, so here is Shape Your Journey, new ways to play. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here so we can see it better. So now they're introducing three stand, like difficulty tiers. So I'm assuming we're still going to have the ability to just change the, the settings of our playthroughs exactly how we want. But for starters, we're going to have different, just like standard rules. So like the relaxed version where things are a little bit easier, standard uh, for it was just how it is now, and brutal would just be a lot more difficult. I'd be very interested to see what this is like. I actually have a feeling that, so I've been wanting to do a, a hardcore run and I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do the settings for the hardcore run. I'm probably just going to do it on brutal. I'm hoping that this is good enough that, like, you know, it's difficult enough that the hardcore run will actually feel satisfying to complete on it. So, and of course, Dracula, we've seen him before. Very, very excited for this. Uh, I mean, come on. He is like the Giga Chad Dracula. Look at this. Like, he is so funny. You think of like Dracula, you think of like a skinny little guy with like slick back hair who's just like, oh, I am Dracula. And this guy's just like, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. This is the real Dracula. Just looks so good. And Dracula's Legion face off against new enemy, the fearsome Draculean uh, monstrosities of the Legion of Noctum. Battle with the mighty generals, the highest echelon of Dracula's court, Elena the Hollow. I think it's probably this one here. Cassius the Betrayer and Valencia the Depraved. I'm going to guess uh, the Betrayers here. I don't even know. <laughs> Some, there's a bunch of guys here. So, yeah, definitely some very interesting stuff there. And, of course, Simon Belmont. So, now we have here improved magic. This is basically just them talking about uh, getting the magic the way you want it by getting the spell points. We talked about it already in a previous video. It's um, going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. New weapons. Draw your bowstring and pick off your foes with pinpoint precision. So there was actually a leaked video back in the day that Red Laugh did that um, I'm sure other people posted, you know, posted about this, but I specifically remember him talking about this and showing showcasing some of the gameplay. It was a rapier and a bow and then like a necromancy dagger or something like that. And the bow, if I remember right, was insanely strong, like kind of broken, it seemed. So I'm assuming, obviously, they probably tuned the stats on it. So I don't know if the abilities are still the same. It could have changed. This was like a year ago. So definitely everything could have changed about the bow. For all I know, it's just like a completely different weapon. But I'm actually super interested to see how that plays out. And of course, oh, and of course, unfurl your whip and lash out at your enemies with unparalleled deadly grace. With brand new weapons at your disposal, there are more methods than ever to dish out death. So this is going to be super interesting to have two more weapons, especially with only eight um, slots, hotbar slots with two more weapons. It's going to be interesting to try to pick between which weapons we want to do to have like maxed out PvP uh, power and potential. New unique weapons. So we actually talked about this already in one of the updates. Conquer obstacles with the new arsenal of Apex legendary weapons. So these are like the, the unique ones. There's already the legendary shards that we have. But this is the one that does this. So like, if you remember the uh, dev update there, they showed where the axes were doing axe E and it was throwing four axes instead of two. And that was just like an alternate, it was an alternate or modified version of axe E. They also confirmed that there's also going to be modified versions of Qs, I believe. So I cannot wait to see what they do with that. It sounds like in-game combat is going to be absolutely ridiculous. It already is pretty nuts. Now it's going to be just totally insane. When people have these these ridiculous weapons, I mean, I mean, imagine you're going around and you you know it's like early on in the wipe cycle, and all of a sudden somebody pulls out this insane weapon and is like, "Hey, what's up? I got this crazy axe that has four axes and is like wide enough to hit your entire team with one e, you know, something crazy like that." So that is going to be pretty cool. Ancestral weapon upgrades, no matter how. So this is a really really cool up thing here. I actually really like this because 
if you know I've, I've talked about this you've played the game if you've played the game you know that when you get the legendary weapons or at least the um the ancestral forge right now killing raziel the blue weapons the blue shards are just like kind of pointless it's like why would i waste my time doing this when i can just like get silver weapons and move on with my life but what this is going to do it says no matter no matter how you rise never abandon your weapons of war the Ancestral Forge now upgrades your legendary weapons to keep up with your progress, meaning you never have to choose between your new tier of tool and your favorite set of blood drinking axes. So, the Gouging Grand Sickle. So, this is a blue one. It looks like they were upgrading from blue up to legendary. Very interesting. And then it shows here. Oh, come on. It shows here that there's three levels. So, level 20, 23, and 26. So, very, very interesting here. So, it looks like we can actually have like, there's a point to making blue weapons early so that instead of like, there may be like a play you could make where instead of just, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm like going over, I'm thinking of a billion things here. There may be a play here where instead of just upgrading to silver and consistently only doing silver weapons uh, and then just skipping blues entirely, there could be a thing where you get, you know, a level, uh, an upgraded here to level 23 to a regular blue, and then you upgrade it to 26, and it's like as strong as silver or maybe sanguine or something like that. That would be super interesting. I'd, I'd be very interested to see what that looks like. Also, it says your legendary weapons. So that Does that mean that our legendaries are also going to be upgraded? Lots to go over there. Uh, and then spider form, new form, my friends, a new form. Skitter to safety as the spider. Change your form to help you get, help you give your enemies the slip and protect yourself from your enemy's watchful eyes and the burning rays of sunlight by hiding in the soil itself. Never be caught out and vulnerable again. Look at this. We get to be lurkers, trapdoor spiders. <laughs> no, you get to Starcraft lurkers and burrow into the ground. I mean, that's pretty sick. So very interested to see what this is going to be like. Uh, it looks really cool. I will say, I guess it's nice to be able to burrow underground um, I doubt that spider form is like invincible to the sun. It's probably just burrowing underground that makes you invincible to sunlight to give you like a second to chill out and like, you know, I don't know if you can maybe heal underground or something, um, but I'm, it's a little weird that it's like another skittering little form when we also have rat form at the moment. So I'm not sure how, what's going on with this, if there's gonna be more things to it. So we'll have to see. And new armor, elevate your ar vampire status with an entirely new level of armor and equipment. So that's the tier four armor that's coming on top of Blood Moon. So Blood Moon's tier three, we're going to tier four. Super excited about that. Armor and equipment. So it's not just armor, it's also equipment. So weapons, uh, amulets, necklaces, that kind of thing. Get geared up to face the greatest threat to your rule yet. On your way to greatness, tailor your garments to your whims. So there's a couple different examples of some new weapons looks pretty cool relocate your castle so this is actually really really awesome they mentioned in an update that they were working on this but they weren't sure if it was going to be done in time for 1.0 well the fact that it's in this post tells me it's ready to go which is awesome this is the whole being able to relocate your castle by laying down the framework and then pressing a button so essentially you're going to be like modeling your castle or rebuilding your castle based on the amount of pieces you have in your current castle at a different location and when you're ready to transport it you just press the button and it like takes everything from your old castle and puts it into the new castle and whatever you didn't use goes into i believe your inventory i think i can't remember seamless item management forge advanced stations for crafting at massively increased speeds and enjoy multiple UI improvements that make the whole process much smoother. So first things first, I know people want like air, like deposit into stash, you like walk in and just like deposit, or you like have things pulled from a box to craft things. I personally don't really care about that one specifically. I mean, it's probably gonna be nice. I'm probably gonna like it, but I don't really feel like the game is needs it that much. I mean, like really just dump everything into your box and then dump everything into it, like, or sorry, into your crafting station and then dump everything into a box. And then if you need more, then just go get more. But like, chances are you probably won't need more. I don't know, it's not, it, it's just fun to be able to interact with your castle, but I don't know, people want what they want. So hopefully it's gonna be good. The one thing I do hope they have is being able to split stacks by specific specific numbers instead of just splitting it in half every time. So obnoxious. <laughs> That's the one UI improvement I want like the most in terms of like weapons. Also, you can look here and see what the whip looks like. It literally looks like a morning star. Here is the bow here. I mean, come on, that looks just so amazing. And then the backpack, 
interested to see what this means. If this is a backpack, like maybe you can put specific things in it. Like, uh, I wonder if this is now like, instead of the bag system, you just have one backpack and in that backpack can go like coins, plants, um, jewels or gems and um, uh, books. So I, I don't know, that'll be really interesting to see there. And this is the other big one, forge advanced stations for crafting at massively increased speeds. How fast has massively increased? That's a huge deal. Uh, new castle decor, super awesome. I mean, we already saw the video, looks absolutely fantastic. Music player, best thing ever. Immerse yourself as familiar music echoes through the quarters of your castle. I cannot wait for this. <laughs> it just sounds so good. Eternal elegance, I mean, look at this. This is basically talking about being able to quote unquote transmog your armor and make it look exactly how you want it to look. Look at that, dude. This is probably gonna be my color setup, I would imagine. Maybe some green, I don't know, we'll have to see. So it just looks so good. Basically, we can make all of our stuff. So it says displaying any appearance you want. So you can make it look, have, have color dye and make it any appearance you want with 10 plus new armor sets to mix and match. 10 plus new armor sets to mix and match, however you like. So good. Gamepad support for my controller enthusiasts. Getting that. Uh, achievement system. This is pretty cool that we're getting this. If you're into achievements, I'm glad that people are going to be able to actually get this. People have been asking for this for two years, so glad about that. And some new music. Can't wait for this. I mean, come on. I, I love the music in this game. So Ruins of Mordium, Simon Belmont, and In Your Castle. Super cool. And there it is. Legacy of Castlevania premium pack. We already kind of looked at this. And so we're going over this. So shape shifting. Two and three. So... Pretty cool stuff and of course all the hairstyles and the skeleton mount so and then if you want it basically just has a link here if you want to see what the update was last year for gloom rot you can take a look that, at that but yeah so that is what we're looking at now and this is super exciting i mean honestly this looks so cool and i cannot wait for this i'm glad they released more information but uh yeah so anyway that is going to be it thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and we will catch you in the next one